when did this job first come on your radar? How mm -hmm. does that process work? And then when it comes to you get the phone call that you're getting hired, mm -hmm. how fast are you talking to recruits? I mean, you gotta you gotta build a staff out. You yeah. got There's signing day deadline that you're coming up against. Yeah. There's so much, like you mentioned, retention of your own roster. You gotta yeah. talk to the guys before they get in the portal. <laughs> right? Yeah. No. So like, just take take me take us through that process of how that actually yeah. goes down. No, it's it's a lot. I mean, it starts probably back in 2000. Uh, seven, eight, nine, and ten. When I was an assistant coach here, my wife and I loved it in Columbia. Two of our three children were born here. Loved living here. Loved coaching here with Coach Spurrier. And it's one of those situations where we left, and we always wanted to come back. So I've always had my always had my eye on this South Carolina program. Followed it, pulled for it, and, and always dreamed of wanting to be the head coach here. So, um, you know, certainly during the twenty twenty season, South Carolina was struggling. I was coaching at Oklahoma. You heard different things about the future of the program and what may or may not happen. So I was following it, you know, coaching my team, coaching the team in Oklahoma, but also following the situation here at Oklahoma, here at South Carolina. Uh, they made a change at the head coaching position on a Sunday. And then I'll be honest, I mean, immediately I was reaching out to whoever I could reach out to to just make sure that they knew that I was extremely interested in this position. I got a call on the very next morning, Monday morning, from the search firm that was going to be handling the search for this, just to tell me that I was a name that had come up and they wanted, South Carolina wanted to do a phone interview with me, mm -hmm. but the search firm made it clear, Shane, it's going to be really, really hard for you to get this job. <laughs> um, there's sitting head coaches that want this job. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of coaches that are interested in this position. It's an SEC job, but they do want to have a phone conversation with you. So that was on Monday morning. You must have crushed that phone interview. <laughs> I, I think so. Um, I hope so. Uh, I uh, We actually did the phone interview, I guess, two nights later. So it was uh, Lincoln Riley. I was coaching at Oklahoma. Lincoln was my boss. I went to Lincoln, told him what was going on, making sure he was okay with it, told him that I wasn't going to – it wasn't going to strap just take away from anything of our preparation at Oklahoma for what we were doing. So I did the phone interview. I think it was – like eight o'clock or nine o'clock on a Wednesday night back in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. which was, you know, kind of after we had gotten all of our work done for the, for the night, uh, at OU did the phone interview with Ray Tanner and Chance Miller, our to, uh, my two bosses here at Carolina. Uh, you know, I tell the story I, I was in my office in Norman at the, at Oklahoma. I had all these notes like spread across the desk, mm -hmm. uh, took everything off my desk, except just notes that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> And I honestly, we talked, I don't know, it's probably two hours. And I don't think I ever looked at those notes one time. It was just a very easygoing conversation because in a lot of ways, and I know it sounds cheesy, but in a lot of ways, I've been preparing for this particular job for a long time because I had been here and I wanted to come back. Yeah. Um, and I remember afterwards getting in the car and calling my wife on the way home and saying to her, you know, I really think I may get this job. Like that interview went really, really, really well. And I had been on interviews before where – you know, sometimes uh, you feel good. Sometimes you don't feel good. But this was just was just different. That was a Wednesday, I guess, the following Friday. It was the day after Thanksgiving interviewed in person uh, for the job. Uh, that was a long process. We met in Atlanta at a hotel. That was about a six hour interview. Uh, very thorough, but very same thing. Very confident and easy yeah. going because I wasn't talking about a program that I wasn't passionate about. I wasn't talking about a program that I didn't know anything about. I knew about this program. That was a week and a half later. And then and then the hard part was at that point, you know, I keep hearing about from from people here how great I had done and that I was in the mix. But I think it was another week, a week and a half before they called and offered me the job. But it was it was funny. I had COVID when they called and offered me the job. <laughs> so I was in quarantine. And it was a Saturday night and South Carolina was playing Kentucky. I had that game on television in my house, but Oklahoma was also playing. We were playing Baylor, but I couldn't coach the game go. because I had I had tested positive for COVID literally right after I had interviewed for the job here mm -hmm. and uh, went into quarantine. So the Saturday that I got offered the job, that was my last day in quarantine. And I knew that South Carolina was going to be called, was going to make a decision that night one way or another. And we were watching the Oklahoma Baylor game. We were watching the South Carolina Kentucky game. It's a weird feeling because <laughs> the team that I'm coaching is playing in a game four miles away and yeah. I'm not there, but I'm also watching this other game on television that I could be the new head coach of by the end of the night. It was just an eerie feeling. 
and um, phone rang about nine o'clock and it was Ray Tanner, the athletic director here at South Carolina called and, and I knew why he was calling and I'm on the edge of my seat because it's, you know, it sounds, it's a big thing. I mean, you see him calling, you realize your life is about to change one way or another. <laughs> yeah. And um, he made small talk for four or five minutes about Get college football that day. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I mean, I, I saw that game earlier yeah. and yeah, that was great too. And, and all this stuff. And then finally he said, well, are you ready to do this thing? And I told him, I said, coach, I've been waiting for my, I've been waiting for a long time to hear you say that. And didn't take me long to accept. And that was probably, shoot, that was probably nine or 10 o'clock um, in, in Oklahoma time. And uh, walked out of the room, my wife and three children, they were just sitting there waiting for me to come out <laughs> of the room. I didn't have to say anything. I just kind of shook my head, yes, that we got the job. Uh, obviously, we had this huge family bear hug and was an emotional moment and a lot of fun. Uh, and then at that point, you immediately start thinking, like you said, about all the things you have to get done. Yeah. And you don't know if the news is going to break or not. In today's time, there's no secrets. So I didn't tell anybody except my mom and dad. Um, <laughs> called my parents to let them know. I think we called my in-laws to let them know. And then next thing you know, it's breaking on national media. <laughs> and your phone immediately starts just yeah. blowing up with phone calls and text messages uh coach tanner said we want to send a plane tomorrow morning to pick you up and bring you out here to south carolina tomorrow morning it's going to be there at 8 30 or 9 o'clock <laughs> at this point it's getting to be late um computer at, we had to sign the term sheet so they could um so they could send the plane yeah. uh computer i forget a computer wasn't working or something so we had to call a neighbor to come over to the house <laughs> to help us with that so we could sign the term sheet and get it back in um, and I don't think I really called anybody specifically about the job until the next day. You know, the rest of the night was just thinking about what I wanted to say to the team the next day, what I needed to get done in Columbia that day when I got there, hopped on a plane on Sunday morning and got over here and, and then dove head first into it. So your press conference was that next day? It was the, uh, yeah. it was the Monday. Got it. So I got the job Saturday night, Sunday morning, got on, got on a plane. Uh, flew over here. First thing I did was come straight to the facility. Mm -hmm. And then all I did the rest of the day on Sunday was I met with every coach that was in the program here um, just to kind of tell them where they stood because I've been a part of a transition before where the head coach never met with the existing staff. He sent the athletic director in <laughs> and the athletic director said he doesn't want to keep any of you guys except he does want to meet with you, you and you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was bull crap yeah. uh so i was like you know what i've been on the other side of it if i ever get a head coaching job i'm at least going to take time to sit down with the coaches and have a conversation with them and either hey I, i'm interested in talking to you i want you to stay or i've got some other body, somebody else in mind if i can help you in any way let me know so i did that all day sunday uh in my office i met with the team um as well so the very first team meeting just to introduce myself that was Sunday, and then the rest of that day was like recruiting calls. And then the next morning, or the next day is when that Monday is when we did the press conference on that Monday. It's a whirlwind, man. It Recru is recruiting the day after. <laughs> they don't give me a lot it's of time, crazy. time to get ready. I, huh? I, I kid, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I kid. Like I, I came over here and had a meeting with the team, met with all the coaches. Finally, it's like whatever time at night, and I'm driving. I'm a zombie at this point, <laughs> and I'm I'm driving back to the hotel. And one of the current players on the team, he call, he's on the South Carolina team, and he calls to tell me that he's decided to enter the NFL draft. And I'm like, I haven't even met you. Like, <laughs> can we at least, like, talk? And, and uh, it was Ernest Jones. He's playing for the Rams now. Yeah. So congrats. I mean, he's had a great career, but it was just like a whirlwind. <laughs> you know, like I got players telling me they're going to the NFL draft. I don't know anybody. It's uh, like, what, what what's going on? Um, but it, it was certainly a whirlwind. And, and then it was crazy because that was Monday. And I guess I stayed through Monday, did the press conference, and it was either Monday night or Tuesday. I flew back to Oklahoma because I wanted. We were getting ready to. Uh, we had one more game, and then we, I guess we were playing in the uh, Big Twelve Championship as well. And I wanted to finish that out with the guys as well. Wow. So it was tough because I'm trying to, you know, balance this job along with Oklahoma. And it was a little bit easier because. Uh, because of COVID, nobody was able to go out on the road recruiting it, yeah. because it was a dead period because of mm -hmm. COVID. So it wasn't like I would have been in, in homes recruiting. Mm -hmm. I would do my as much Oklahoma stuff during the day as I could and, or that I needed to get that done. And then the rest of the day and the night was, yeah. was, was uh, you know, I mean, I can remember sitting in my office in Norman, Oklahoma and 
talking to potential coaches, talking to recruits, uh, just a, a lot of stuff going on for sure. During that six hour interview in yeah. the in the hotel room in Atlanta, you mm -hmm. said it was Atlanta. Yeah. What what uh, first of all. What, why was it in Atlanta? And then also, what what goes on in the six hour hotel room interview? Yeah, they just are you is it are you whiteboard talking? Is it philosophy? Is it no? Uh, great question. I guess it was in Atlanta because that was a central meeting point. You know how it is with a lot of these searches. Everybody tries to track Secret planes <laughs> and 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 all this stuff. And there was all these there were some rumors that had come out. I remember that we had that we had interviewed in Oklahoma City or something like that, mm -hmm. and. It was um, that never happened at all. So actually, what what we were going to do is Oklahoma was scheduled to play uh, West Virginia uh, that weekend, I think, and that game got postponed because of COVID or canceled because of COVID. And initially, we were going to meet in Morgantown, West Virginia, uh, on the Friday night before the uh, before the West Virginia Oklahoma game and. Thankfully, it didn't because that would have been probably a two-hour interview because that would have been on a Friday night. So when that game got postponed, we just uh, shifted and and I didn't really talk about where we were going. They just said, <laughs> they just can you, you can you be in Atlanta <laughs> um, yeah. on the Friday after Thanksgiving at whatever time? So flew into Atlanta and we checked into a hotel and just sat in a hotel suite You know, for six hours. It was myself and Ray Tanner, our athletic director, and Chance Miller, who's our deputy athletic director, the three of us. Uh, our president here at South Carolina at the time, he was actually in quarantine because of COVID. So I did a Zoom with him. Okay. Um, and I'll never forget, <laughs> he. Uh, uh, it was the same day that Iowa State was playing at Texas, the day after Thanksgiving, and it was a great game. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing my interview with the president, who's awesome. He's a football guy. And he's sitting there watching the end of the Iowa State Texas game <laughs> while he's interviewing me. <laughs> and I knew what he was doing. So I was interested too, because that was a yeah. Big 12 team and I'm in the Big 12. So we were kind of talking. He was giving me the rundown of the end of that game, had a great visit with him. And then the rest of the day, I would say it was primarily philosophy. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think um, I was interviewing for a head coaching position. I don't know if they were as interested in whether I could. Yeah. Talk about our run game versus a three four <laughs> defense or whatever, you know, yeah. or or talk about how you're gonna play cover three mm -hmm. or something like that. It was more them wanting to see can you be the CEO, can you be the face of the program, um, coaching staff, guys that you have in mind, mm -hmm. who you would want to hire, what does your offense look like, what does your defense look like, special teams, recruiting philosophy. I mean, you name it, everything from a phil yeah. philosophical standpoint, that's what we did. And it was uh it flew by i mean it really did it was it was six hours and i never got up one time i mean i kid coach tanner or my boss that he never gave me a bathroom break he <laughs> never fed it's me a long time man. i mean i literally just sat down and i felt like i got interrogated but it was great it was a very easy conversation yeah. but i think i had two bottles of water never got up once and and we just sat in there and and, and did the interview but same thing when i walked out of that i felt you know really really good about it yeah. that and i had known <clears throat> coach tanner our athletic director, he was the baseball coach here at South Carolina when I was an assistant football coach. Right. He won two national championships as the baseball coach. He's fantastic because he's a sports guy. He gets it. Um, and, and, and Chance is fantastic as well. So it was a very, uh, very easygoing conversation, but felt confident about what I was talking about. And again, it was something that <clears throat> um, I had been on other interviews before i know it sounds crazy but every interview that i've been on before um there was always like this end goal of ending up here at south south carolina you know and, and i'll be honest there are jobs that i interviewed in the for in the past that i remember saying to my wife you know does this this if this school were to offer this job does this get us closer to hopefully coming back to south carolina one day yeah. and uh so it was very uh, stressful because it's one of those, man, this is something my wife and I've been talking Dream. about for 10 plus years. <laughs> yeah. Don't screw this up, Shane, <laughs> as well. But again, um, I had great passion and confidence about uh, what I was talking about. Yeah.